Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree from On The Hot Podcast. Today, this will be episode 175 for you guys today. Of course, this episode is coming out on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So let's go ahead and dive into the first segment of the episode this week. I'll be sharing my NFL hot takes after week four of the NFL season. So I gather up all the information that I've seen in the first month of football for the 2024-25 NFL season. These are my hot takes that I have after watching the first month of football. This is hot takes for a reason. Some of these things may happen or there is some truth to what I'm going to say. So starting off with hot take number one, Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield win MVP this year. Look, Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield are balling out right now. It is insane to think that one of these two respective quarterbacks could have a chance of winning MVP this year. This is a hot take for a reason. But both of these two respective quarterbacks from the 2018 draft class are playing the best football of their NFL careers thus far. Both were basically kicked to the curb by the franchise that drafted them. Sam Darnold getting the worst end of it when he was drafted by the New York Jets. Baker Mayfield be the the Browns giving up on Baker and choosing Deshaun Jackson, uh, Deshaun Watson, excuse me. But both of these quarterbacks and both of these quarterbacks were actually teammates with the Carolina Panthers at one point a few years ago. But things have turned around for the better for both of them. Sam Darnold has the Minnesota Vikings at four and zero, one of the undefeated teams in the NFL so far, playing the best ball of his career. Sam Darnold actually leads the league in passing touchdowns. This NFL season with 11 passing touchdowns, three interceptions. And Baker Mayfield is putting together a good run in Tampa Bay with the Buccaneers. Just helped them win a playoff, win, uh, playoff game last year. He has helped the Bucs start off to 3-1 and one this year. Has a total of eight passing touchdowns, three interceptions. So these respective quarterbacks are playing the best ball of their career. And who's to say that, that one of these respective quarterbacks cannot win MVP this year if they continue to keep it up this NFL season? It's a hot take, but it could turn into a reality if they, they keep it up. These two respective quarterbacks keep it up. Now, hot take number two, but this is something I really can't see happening at this particular point in the NFL season. Doug Peterson getting fired by the Jacksonville Jaguars after week five. Now, I can really see this happening because the Jaguars find themselves at 0-4, the only winless team this NFL season thus far. The Jacksonville Jaguars, their fans are dying for a win. They haven't won a ball game in 275 days. Their last win came against the Carolina Panthers week 17 last NFL season. And last season, the Jacksonville Jaguars were in a pretty good position to succeed and make the playoffs. They started off the season 8-3, first place in the AFC South, firm control of the AFC South. But then they had that second half collapse, went 9-8 and eight and missed the playoffs and did not win the AFC South. So, Things have not been going good in Jacksonville, and Doug Peterson should not be getting the blame for this. He is a damn good coach. Won a damn Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles with a backup quarterback in Nick Foles a few years ago, bringing Philadelphia their only Super Bowl in franchise history. But the rest of the Jacksonville Jaguars have failed Doug Peterson on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball. They're not playing up to their standards. And it's not getting better when your $275 million quarterback in Trevor Lawrence isn't playing up to par, up to the money, up to the generational talent nickname. And when you put stat for stat, when you look at the film, he's no different than Daniel Jones. But Trevor Lawrence has not won a ball game since November of last season. And I hate to say it, whether it's Anthony Richardson or Joe Flacco that suit up for the Colts week five, if the Jacksonville Jaguars lose this game, I feel like Doug Peterson is going to be fired if they start off 0-5. That's a hot take, but I do believe that is a real reality that could happen after this upcoming NFL week. Now, let's get into the next one. The Chicago Bears were better off keeping Justin Fields as their quarterback rather than drafting Caleb Williams first overall in the NFL draft. Now, this is hot takes for a reason. But after four weeks of football, I have yet to see anything out of Caleb Williams. I, I just don't see it for him yet. Maybe my eye will turn and there's plenty of time for that opinion of mine to change. But I just don't see it with Caleb Williams. I had a funny feeling about him coming out of USC, coming out of college, 
based off of not the plays that he can make or the acrobatic throws or the highlight reels that he can put on your YouTube for you guys to post on your YouTube highlights of Caleb Williams. But as I digress, I just feel like Caleb Williams always struggled against, well, he did actually struggle against top-ranked opponents, uh, top 25 teams of college football. The stats don't lie, and he struggled against ranked opponents. Did he have the best around him at USC? No. But for a generational talent, a first overall pick, you're not supposed to play that bad against ranked opponents. And listen, Caleb Williams hasn't played up to the par just, just yet. And the Bears could have continued to build around Justin Fields. Justin Fields showed you a little something, a little glimpse of what he could possibly do towards the end of last season. But the Bears decided to move on. You could, If the Chicago Bears were, in my opinion, smart, they could have kept Justin Fields. He could have drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. first overall in the draft and then drafted a lineman with a ninth overall pick and continue to build this team around Justin Fields. Now, there's the argument that the Bears don't have a good offensive line, which there is truth to that. But I haven't seen Caleb Williams really pass the eye test to me of being a franchise quarterback or showing that he could be this generational talent that these analysts were that uh, spanked and put on his name. But I, I, what I'm seeing right now from Justin Fields, Justin Fields just looks like a real leader with the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. I mean, Justin Fields has more passing yards than Caleb Williams, less interceptions than Caleb Williams, sacked less than Caleb Williams, more wins than Caleb Williams. And this was the this was a layup for Caleb Williams to succeed in his rookie season with all the amount of talent around him. DJ Moore. I know Keenan Allen hasn't been healthy, but he still had Keenan Allen when he was out on the field. Uh, Odunze, wide receiver from Washington. Uh, DeAndre Swift. I, things haven't played out the best for Caleb Williams yet, but come on. You, you replaced it Justin Fields to bring him in just to for him to be, I wouldn't say lackluster thus far, but play less, uh, play, I, I, how do I put this? Play in a way that is under Justin Fields right now. I'll put it at that. But, and Justin Fields has less offensive talent around him in Pittsburgh compared to what Caleb Williams has in Chicago. But as I digress, now this one, there's some truth to this one. It's Nick Sirianni. I believe Nick Sirianni will be fired by the Philadelphia Eagles by the end of the NFL season. Unless... Nick Sirianni could bring the Eagles another Super Bowl in Philadelphia. I think the Eagles are going to cut ties with Nick Sirianni because I just don't feel like it's working. There's no ca accountability for what's going on with the Philadelphia Eagles. Two and two, they started, they're starting off two and two, yes, but there's no accountability on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball. And Darius Slay tweeting about his achievements for what he's done in his NFL career instead of addressing what went wrong against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the road, a team that sent you home in the playoffs last year. And you're not addressing that. C.J. Gardner saying they're going to put belt to ass on this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. And then 33 points later, they lose this game by the Bucs putting up 33 points on them. I just feel like there's no accountability uh, you can see the relationship between Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts is not the best. It's pretty rocky, in my opinion. And Jalen Hurts has actually regressed since Shane Steichen went to the Indianapolis Colts. He hasn't been a top 10 quarterback. He led the league in turnovers last year. Uh, is having he's, he's thrown four interceptions thus far to start off the season. I just don't see any accountability in there right now for Philadelphia. Uh, on both sides of the ball, they're lacking a true leader, in my opinion, a true locker room leader. I know that Jason Kelsey isn't around anymore, but man, I, I just feel like Nick Sirianni is not the guy. And I, I've said this for a long time. I felt like uh, a few years ago when they made the Super Bowl, he was overshadowed by coordinators. Now he finds himself with some good coordinators again, Vic Vangio and Kellen Moore on the offensive and de defensive side of the ball. And I, I just feel like Nick Sirianni was never really a good coach to begin with. So I feel like I stand on that one. I think that is a hot take, but I do believe that could become a reality if the Eagles don't win the Super Bowl this year. So those are my NFL hot takes after, the, uh, after week four of this NFL season.